So I'm a documentary filmmaker, and that's meant no fame and no fortune, but it's also met, meant great adventures all over the world that would never have happened if I didn't do this for a living. Like going on a raid to free slaves imprisoned at a stone quarry in India with the man who just won the Nobel Peace Prize. They had 15 minutes to decide whether to go with us or not. At the last moment, they came. Or going to Potosi in Bolivia, where millions of indigenous Americans died mining on countless tons of silver for the Spanish. Being at the top of that mountain with indigenous miners still searching for silver was unforgettable. But the one thing you learn is that you can't predict how much fun the adventure will be ahead of time. We thought going to Paris would be fantastic. That camera broke, it was an unmitigated disaster. <laughs> and then there was Antigua. We went there to film with the man who sequenced the human genome. He was sailing his yacht from Spain to the New World along the path Columbus took. But he was so pompous, it was really boring. <laughs> On the other hand, there were the cornfields of Illinois where none of us wanted to go, but we had to to film with the man who figured out how to sequence DNA. His name was Carl Woes. And Carl Woes was an incredible curmudgeon, famous throughout the scientific community for being a grouch. And it was really hard to talk him into filming with us. And when we came, he said he wouldn't film with us because he changed his mind. And I yelled at him and said he was sabotaging his only chance to explain to the world what he'd done with his life and why it was important. And he finally gave in, but we didn't think it would be any fun. But Carl Woes turned out to be a really remarkable man. And as soon as he found out that we were really good at what we did and really dedicated and nice people, he turned into one of the most interesting people I've ever spent time with. He loved music, and together we came up with the idea of using the fact that all the music ever composed relies on just a few notes to explain that all the living things ever composed rely on just the four chemicals in DNA. And he took us to his dingy office where he had put up a bunch of x-rays in the 1960s that revealed tiny skeins of DNA from a bunch of different organisms, and he stared at them every day for 10 years. Finally, he figured out how to sequence DNA, and he, how to use those sequences to tell how closely related everything on Earth is to every other. That discovery made him famous worldwide. But that wasn't what he wanted to talk about. He wanted to talk about something that no other journalist who'd ever come had been interested in, which is what his research showed about the place of human beings on planet Earth. And he asked us to go film with him in a grove of trees. And he picked up this rock from the ground and held it in the air and said, you won't have any trouble believing that you're not related to this rock. Then he pointed to the trees and said, you might also think you're not related to these trees. In fact, you share 70% of your DNA with these trees, and they are really close relatives of yours. And in fact, you are closely related to every living thing you can see. And you can't understand your place on this planet without understanding that. When he was finished, he stared up at the treetops, and I walked over to him thinking, wow, I didn't expect this old curmudgeon to turn into a guy who I really am enjoying talking with. And then he looked down at me and he said, you know, there was a time in the 60s when I didn't think I was going to be able to figure it out. And I thought he was going to tell me about his great moment of discovery in the lab. Instead, he said, Carl, my name too, when you did acid, did you always see the same pattern? <laughs> and I just stammered and finally said, yes, yes I did. <laughs> and he said, the pattern I saw when I did acid is what enabled me to figure out how to sequence DNA. <laughs> I still have this rock on my bedroom dresser and we all agreed when Carl Woes died last year that going to Illinois to meet him was one of the best adventures we ever had. <laughs>